Today I'm going to talk about the new emerging field of biomechatronics, what's commonly referred to as bionics. Now, bionics seeks to uh, replace or augment uh, by employing electronics and electromechanical devices uh, human function, where these devices are attached to the body or, or actually implanted inside the body. But before I tell you about the science of bionics, I'd like to tell you a bit about my life story because my personal trajectory motivates the work that I do at MIT uh, even today. In 1982, I was in a tragic mountain climbing accident. I set out to climb Mount Washington with my climbing partner at the time, and we got struck by a blizzard and were out there for nearly four days. I suffered severe frostbite, and my doctors struggled for months to save my biological limbs. But on March 24th, 1982, both of my legs were amputated uh, so I stand before you supported entirely by artificial structures, carbon composite, titanium, and silicon. Now, after my accident, I dreamed of climbing again. But how? How might this be possible? The answer, of course, was technology. So here you see uh, I'm clinging to dear life uh, over 100 feet up with, without a rope, of course. So I actually designed my body from the ground up, designing specialized prostheses. These particular processes allowed me to stand on small rock edges the width of a coin. So I'm a lucky person because both of my legs are amputated. It's fantastic. Why? Because I can adjust my height. I can be as short as five feet and as tall as I'd like. <laughs> so here I'm a towering seven foot five inches and able to reach hand and footholds that most of my climbing colleagues are not able to reach. Now the capacity to change one's height allows one to conduct interesting experiments. During my first several weeks of undergraduate study, I decided to increase my height by one inch every day. And I wanted to see how long would it take for someone to say, hmm. <laughs> now granted, I was not very popular, so I went to a towering height of eight feet tall. I was touching the ceiling to balance, and someone finally said, you seem to be growing. And I said, of course, college is a growing experience. <laughs> so from this experience, uh, I realized that technology can heal, can rehabilitate. And in my own case, uh, technology from time to time ten, can augment human capability beyond what nature intended. I was able to climb at a more advanced level after my accident with artificial limbs than I was ever able to achieve before my accident with normal biological limbs. To achieve this level of success, I had to view my own body in a distinct way from how society was viewing my body. I no longer viewed my biological body as broken. I viewed those things as broken. I viewed technology as broken. I reasoned that there's no such thing as a disabled person. There are only disabled technologies. There's only poor design. Since technology is modifiable and can be approved upon, human limitation can be overcome through technological innovation. I viewed my artificial limbs not as a curse, but as, a, as an opportunity, a blank palette for which to create. And as a young man, I envisioned a future where technology is so advanced, the human-machine interaction is so profound, that we can rid the world of, of disability. Sadly, uh, sadly uh, most people with brain or body conditions are not well served by technology. This is a US soldier. He's hit by a blast near Baghdad. He's missing three limbs, an arm, and two legs. This is what state-of-the-art technology can now provide. This is a good start, but we have $100,000 worth of prosthetic and about $40 worth of crutch. It's a good start. We need to do much better. It's not well appreciated, but uh, over half the US population, and by extension, the world population, suffers from some cognitive, emotional, or physical disability. And I, I believe in the twilight years of this century, through advances in the field of genetics, regenerative medicine, bionics, There'll be a whole host of interventions where we can, for the most part, rid the world of disability. So I see in the audience a lot of people wearing eyeglasses. It used to be that you were labeled by dis society as disabled before this fantastic prosthesis called eyeglasses existed. And now you have a condition of poor eyesight, but you're not disabled. Similar to me, you cannot with a straight face label me as disabled. I happen to have this minor condition called limb amputation. But because of great technology, I climb mountains, for God's sake. So one of the key areas 
of science and technology that promises to fundamentally change the human in this century is bionics. Now, bionic augmentation is most often comes about through an interplay between science and design. By more fundamentally understanding how we work, how humans work, designers are in a better position to architect devices, uh, bionic devices or synthetic minds and bodies. So if, in my lab, we're developing uh, biophysical models. This is a Ford dynamic simulation of a, of a person walking that captures the movement and forces and energetics of human walking. So here we model the muscles, the tendons, the spinal reflexes. And this, such a biophysical model motivates what we build in terms of hardware and software. Here's a US soldier walking in one of our uh, artificial knee joints. We also build bionic joints that uh, wrap around an impaired limb. Stroke, as, as we all know, is a, is a huge problem. So this gentleman suffered a stroke, and he has the classic drop foot pathology, where there's a muscle impairment in the anterior compartment of the leg. So what we did is build a robotic appendage that wraps around his limb, pushes on his body. And what we could find with the right hardware and software design is we can restore the symmetry between left and right sides and his capacity to walk at high speeds. More ambitiously, we're thinking about exoskeletal structures that span the entire human leg. So this device spans the ankle, knee, and hip, and it dramatically lowers the forces and stress through the biological leg. So if you have a bad hip or knee, you can still run on hard surfaces without pain. And if you don't yet have a bad knee and hip, perhaps you want to use such an exoskeleton in the future to prevent later requirements for total knee and hip replacements, which is tens of billion dollars of industry each year. So this interplay between science and design is now beginning to bear fruit. It's now beginning to show actual bionic technology. This is Amy Mullins and myself. We're sporting these bionic, shiny, Porsche-like devices that normalize our locomotory function and using some metrics actually augment our capability. Now I'm often asked, if I could magically have my biological legs back, would I do so? And I say, absolutely not. My, bi my bionic limbs are part of my creation. They're part of my body. They're part of my identity. Besides, I can upgrade. <laughs> Just yesterday, I got a hardware and software upgrade. And because the artificial part of my body is upgradable, it's immortal. It improves with time, wherein the biological part of my body degrades due to age-related degeneration. When I'm an octogenarian, I'll be able to walk with less energy than an 18-year-old. My balance will be superior, and I'll be supporting these titanium Porsche-like devices into my parties. How cool is that? <laughs> Would anyone like to see my bionic limbs? Let me sit on a chair here and pull up my pant leg. So ladies and gentlemen, the anatomy of the bionic limb. So there are five computers on each side and 12 sensors. The control system, again, we actually model my missing muscles and tendons and reflexes. And then we take sensory information from the bionic prosthesis and input that into the biophysical model. And that model tells the computers on board what should be the torque and impedances of the bionic limb. So the bionic limb moves as if it's made of muscles and tendons and spinal re reflexes. It moves as if it's made of flesh and bone. Now, because everybody walks a little bit differently, of course, we, we pro programmed a, a, a mobile phone app. So with the stroke of my finger, I can vary how stiffness, the stiffness of my artificial limb, uh, the dampening, how much power I get. So I can program my body just by flicking the body. Next year, we'll be Googling our bodies, I'm sure. <laughs> so in a few years, I'll be getting uh, small implants into my residual limb muscles that measure the muscle depolarization. So I think, fire my muscles, that depolarization information is sent out to the bionic limb, and the bionic limb will respond. So I can exert movement intent on the bionic limb. And in a decade or so, the bionic limb will be linked to my nerve endings. So then we'll map sensory information from the bionic limb onto my nervous system. So I'll not only be able to walk across a sandy beach, but to some extent feel the sand against my synthetic structures. Now, when my legs were amputated, 
that part of my brain that was mapped to my biological legs fundamentally changed, it remapped. Now I was a horrible student, I was a D student before my amputations, and now I'm an MIT professor. So pre-amputation, idiot. Post-amputation, <laughs> supposed genius. So I'm concerned, I, I think once I'm neurally linked to my bionic structures, I'll revert back to my idiotic high school state. <laughs> but I'm not too concerned, but by, by that time I'll have to be a full tenured professor at MIT. <laughs> So I'll now remove my prosthesis to show you how they're attached. There's a button on the side. If I push that button, they'll come off. Most people, when you push their buttons, they get angry. With me, my legs just fall off. <laughs> so I'll just pop them off. So without technology, I am legless. I'm severely crippled. I can only crawl. Scientist and mathematician Archimedes said, give me a place to stand and a long enough lever and I will move the whole world. When I attach my body to these bionic limbs, I can stand, I can walk. In this age of bionics, our machines will no longer be separate lifeless mechanisms but extent, extend intimate organic extensions of our body. When I walk, there's an exchange of information there's an exchange of energy. There's an exchange of force between my biological self and my artificial self. It senses my biological postures and reflects its posture. It stores energy and catapults my biology forward. My biological leg pushes on it and I push back in a collaborative, seamless dance between flesh and machine. A symbiotic relationship reaching far beyond the digital age. Archimedes, give me a place to stand and a lever long enough and I will move the whole world. In this 21st century, humanity will be given a place to stand and a lever that's long enough. Through fundamental advances in fields such as genetics, regenerative medicine and bionics, we will rid the world of disability. And we will set the technological foundation where the only limits that we will see, experience, are the limits of, of physical law, the laws of nature, and the boundaries of our collective imagination. The extent to which we can change human function and expression will be deeply profound. With bionic limbs, I can stand, I can walk, I can run and bounce. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bionic age. Thank you. Thank you.